when we deal with circular motion, we're going to introduce uh, a new quantity, one that we've not come across before, and it's to make the mathematics involved with circular motion a little bit easier. We're going to define a quantity known as angular velocity. And in a sentence, it's simply the rate at which you sweep out an angle. And the idea is if you have an object that starts off here at t is naught, and it's going anti-clockwise a bit later on, it will be here at time t. Uh, there's the radius of the uh, orbit there, and there's another radius, which is there, I'll call it little r. Now, the angular velocity is the rate at which the object sweeps out an angle. And the angle in question is this angle here. I'll label it as theta. So if I say to you that angular velocity is the rate at which theta is, as it were, swept out, then the formula for it must be the angle swept out per, and then you divide by time, so it's divided by, by unit time, effectively. Now, the angular velocity is almost always given the symbol omega. Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. So omega, the angular velocity, is theta divided by t. However, when we use the angular velocity omega, and it's the angle per, per unit time that's swept out, it is very inconvenient to use your angle in degrees. So there's another way of measuring an angle. You will notice that if you sweep out an angle theta, you have to, or the object has to move along an arc and I'm going to represent the length of the arc as being s. And a good way of defining how big theta is, is this. All you do is you take the arc length of s and you divide it by the radius r. Now, the beauty of that is this. If I had a different circle and you had a bigger radius, perhaps, um, and your circle came out here, maybe. And you had the same angle, so the same lines would come out. The value of your arc would get bigger, so that would get bigger, but so would your radius value. And you will find that the ratio of s over r is still the same as before. So it doesn't matter how big your circle is, the value of your angle that you've swept out can always be defined as being the arc length which is the distance the object has traveled, divided by the radius of the, of the circle. What that means then is this, if I allow the object to go one complete circle, then the arc length will become one complete radius, one complete circumference. So the value of theta for one circle would be the circumference of that circle and then you divide by the radius of that circle. Now of course the radius of a circle, sorry the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r and you divide that by the radius of the circle and that is r as well and the r's cancel. And that means that your angle theta is 2 pi. So if I take an angle of 360 degrees, which is basically one circle, and I convert your 360 degrees into this new way of measuring angles, that would be equivalent to 2 pi. Now, we like to have names for our units. We use degrees for the 360 version. Well, these... Uh, angles here that we're talking about, uh, defined as arc length divided by radius, they're called radians. 
So you would say that 360 degrees is equivalent to 2 pi radians. Now, strictly speaking, the radian isn't a proper unit. Um, and the reason for that is, if you say that an angle is an arc length over a radius, of course, the arc length you'd measure perhaps in metres, and you divide the radius uh, in metres, and the metres basically cancel out. So it's just a ratio. So even though the radian sounds as if it's a, a proper unit, in fact, it's what they call something which is dimensionless. It means then this. Angular velocity is the angle swept out, theta, per unit time. So you divide by t. We've seen that there's a special case. If you allow the object to go a complete circle, then the angle swept out is 2 pi radians. So let's put that in instead. And the question then arises, well, if I allow my uh, object to go one complete circle, how long does it take to do one complete orbit? And the answer is the periodic time of the orbit. So for the um, moon going around the Earth, the periodic time would be 27 days. If it was the Earth spinning, the periodic time would be a day. If it was the Earth going around the sun, it would be a year. But the point is, if you, whatever's going around in a circle, if it goes around and does one orbit, you divide by the periodic time. And that means that you can also write it like this. One over the period as we know from our waves uh, knowledge, is equal to the frequency. So 1 over the periodic time is the frequency. So 2 pi over t becomes 2 pi f. And those are the three versions of angular velocity which we are going to find very useful indeed.